State will get it to start with. Mark Renaud out to the 30, and he's out to the 35-yard line. And that's where Michigan State will put it in play, a 35-yard return for Renaud. There's Todd Schultz. Yeah, and he struggled against some pretty good teams the last couple of weeks, Ohio State and Michigan, so he needs to get his confidence going early, Rich. That's one thing when you talk about Michigan State, the two teams they've played the last two weeks. Michigan, Ohio State, very good. Gary Scott in motion. Cedric Irvin up the middle. We should see a lot of that today. Leo Perez makes the stop for the Boilermakers. Offensively, this Michigan State offense at 349 yards per game. Josh Kerr is one of Schultz's favorite targets. Irvin is the leading receiver. Kerr, the tight end, 27 catches. Octavius Long and Gary Scott, the wide receivers. Michigan State told us they need to make big plays. Big guy, Flozell Adams, 330 pounds at 6'7", the left tackle on All-American. On second down, Irvin straight ahead. He's got a first down, and he's out to the 47-yard line. And a real concern for Joe Tiller's defense at Purdue. Can they stop Cedric Irvin and a pounding they might receive all day long? Roosevelt Colvin, the junior, leads this front four, six and a half sacks. This unit has 24 sacks on the season. A linebacking court uh, trio that's very small, although Willie Fells had a big game last week. 15 solo tackles, 20 altogether. In the secondary, Lamar Kennard, the sophomore, three interceptions and three sacks. It's Irvin again. He's across midfield to the 49-yard line. Damian Hiram is in motion. Schultz's first throw is caught at the 45-yard line. Spartans in Boilermaker territory. First drive of the ball game. Third and two. Irvin has the first down. Lee Brush made the stop at the 41-yard line. Cedric again left side. He's buried by Leo Perez. No gain on the play. Second down and 10. Schultz to the air. Has his man, the big tight end, Josh Kerr, to the 27-yard line. And it's a first down for Michigan State. The Spartans impressively moving the football. Mark Renan left side. And he's down to the 23-yard line. Second down and five. Renan again, short of the first down. And that's Willie Fells. What a day he had at Iowa City. 15 solo tackles, one short of the school record, 20 tackles altogether. Yeah, he was just all over the field. And the, that game was somewhat misleading. The score that Iowa put up so many points. Well, the defense played pretty well. But in the second half, Iowa was almost in Purdue territory the entire game. So they were already set up for scores. Schultz and the Spartans face with third down and three. And it's long again. Enough for the first down. Just what Nick Saban scripted to us yesterday. Irvin. Cedric Irvin tripped up from behind. Cedric Irvin, the ball carrier. Warren Moore with the tackle. A statistic everyone talks about in football inside the red zone, 93%. One problem for Michigan State last two weeks, they were in the red zone just once against Michigan, just once against Ohio State. Irvin. Nice move, but he's inside the five, very close to a first down. Last season, these two teams met. It was an embarrassment for Purdue and a big day for Cedric Irvin. Yeah, the four touchdowns, a freshman running back getting four touchdowns in his first game. Irvin looking for his first touchdown in this game. To the one. Second and goal. Irvin. Is he in? Not quite, and there's a flag down. And I think the Spartans have scored. And it counts. On the defense, decline, touchdown. For the extra point. Welcome back. 
to West Lafayette. As Purdue, with their first touch of the football, Chris Clapton is clobbered at the 23-yard line. And Michigan State is fired up right now. And Michigan State with a 7-0 lead. And let's see Purdue on their first possession. Ed Watson straight ahead. A gain of maybe a yard. You heard Sean Salisbury talk about Billy Dickin and his struggles last week. He got off to a great start, not only in the season, but the start of the Iowa game. His numbers as a whole, very impressive. 16 touchdowns and nine interceptions. Vinny Sutherland in motion. It's the pass goes to Donald Winston. Winston gets loose and is out of bounds at the 39-yard line. A variety of formations for this Boilermaker offense. Ed Watson in the backfield will get a lot of carries as well, and he'll catch the football. 21 catches. He averages 60 yards per game. Winston, Blackman, Cox, you'll see them in patterns all day long. Up front, it's a very solid offensive line, just 14 sacks. Chucky Okobe is a redshirt freshman, the youngest of that offensive line. Watson straight ahead, and he's out to the 43-yard line. A gain of about five. Michigan State defense, very good, and very good against the run. Just 112 yards per game. 27 sacks on the season. Robert Smith has 10 of those sacks. Demetrius Underwood has six of them. The linebacking trio, Ike Reese with 90 tackles, leads the team. Seven tackles for a loss. He's a senior. And a secondary that has been good this year, Ray Hill, the only senior with three interceptions. That secondary, you won't see four. You'll probably see five and six all day long. Dickin unloads it, and it's a good thing that Watson didn't catch it. He would have lost a bunch of yardage. Dickin with time. Has his man, Winston, first down, Purdue. Out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Much like Nick Saban with Todd Schultz, Joe Tiller, Certainly wanted to get Billy Dickin some confidence to start this one. Quarterback draw. Dickin goes down. It's Robert Smith who sacks him at the 46-yard line. Billy Dickin and the Boilers are into Spartan territory. Dickin again, running out of time and running out of room, and he goes down back at the 49-yard line. Isaac Jones in motion. Dickin throws. Throws and it is intercepted. No, who's got it? Alfred came up with it and it's incomplete. Danny Rogers to punt and it's Urban. That's Urban in motion. A big pullback. Travis Reese gets the call. Off the left side, out to the 33-yard line. Three weeks ago, Michigan State was flying high. They were approaching the top 10. They were 5-0. They wiped out Indiana on the 11th of October. What has happened since? Well, take a look right down here. You see this? Three conference games against pretty good opponents, Michigan, Ohio State, Northwestern. The running game has gone in the tank during those three games. And with that, that's been the problem with them. They haven't been able to run the ball. They've turned it over too much. That Northwestern loss, a real tough one. Chris Gardner had a field goal block that could have won it at the end. Movement and flags up front. Upside, on the defense, five yards, first down. Down to the sidelines. Let's hope he's not offside. Sean Salisbury. Sean, what's up? Well, thanks, Rich. You know, not only did Michigan State make a great play calling on the first drive to produce points, but they also pre present problems long term now for Purdue. Urban runs, they throw short hitch passes, a pop pass to the tight end. Now, Purdue starts squeezing them and playing tighter, which is conducive to the big play. Look for them to set that up before this half's over. I agree, Sean. Getting the lead early, big. They did not have that luxury against Michigan or Ohio State. Urban straight ahead. A gain of about four. Michigan State is as big as you get up front. Urban with a big hole, and he's out to the 41-yard line. Mike Hawthorne made the stop. Urban again. And he's loose. Cedric Urban with a nice spin to the 31-yard line. He's right on the stick. This is Leroy McFadden the 28-yard line. 
McFadden again. Pounds it. Loses it. Loose ball. Boilermakers have it. If they are short of the first Outside, down. Outside, on the defense, decline. And it looks like they are. It's fourth down in inches. Yeah. They're going to decline the penalty. Michigan State is a very good fourth down team. Best in the Big Ten Conference at 9 of 11. Yeah, good running and pretty good guys to run behind on that left side with Fosnell Adams and Shaw. Will keep it. I don't know. I don't know. Purdue knows. What a big stop for the Boilers. Purdue knew all the while. Joe Tiller. Hoping that Billy Dicker gets things straightened out. His last pass. A right to Amp Cameron, the Spartan quarterback. This one is caught by Alfred, his first touch of the ball game. And Brian Alfred is across the 35. He's got a first down. Boilermakers first and 10. Dickin swings it out. Sutherland trying to get outside. And Vinny Sutherland is out of bounds at the 41-yard line. He found Alfred, then Sutherland. On second down, they give it to Ed Watson. And Ed Watson has a first down across midfield. And the momentum is squarely on the side of the Boilermakers right now. It moves it into Michigan State territory. Watching again. Lost the ball, but he's out of bounds. It was early in that second quarter that Dickin missed Brian Alfred on a fade route that would have made it 24-7. Watson again. Inside the 35, first down Boilermakers. Down to the 33-yard line. But Purdue... First a turnover, and here at the start of this drive with a big fourth down stop in their own territory. Sutherland handing it back off. Alfred makes the catch. He'll score. Chris Daniels with a touchdown pass. And which I want to tell you, Chris Daniels threw a great ball. Because he saw the safety coming over and he changed the way he, the way he was going to throw it. Schultz 
Man open and a good throw to the 38-yard line. Scott's in motion. And it's Irvin straight ahead. Renard. Mark Renard breaks loose. And Renard is inside the Boilermaker 25-yard line. And a flag goes down at the end of the run. And he's just passed. Whoa. The flag is against Michigan State. Back to the 40-yard line. It is, however, a first down. Schultz's throw is caught by Scott, and he's up to the 30. Lost the ball. Produce as they have it. The officials say it was down. Michigan State on the move. Renard hit in the backfield. They lose yardage. Schultz. Boy, is he sharp right now. Gary Scott with another catch on that throw. On first and 10. And again, it's Scott in a crowd to the 20-yard line. Lights go down. Renard doesn't. Renard to the 10, to the 5. He is in. Touchdown, Michigan State. Flag sits at the 22-yard line. They're going to get Purdue for being offside. Watch him over here to the left side. You'll see good blocking, 73 Shaw, and then the fullback's inside. Great blocking. Flozell Adam takes his man to the outside, and Renard with the quickness to get it to the end zone. And the Spartans with an extra point. Chris Gardner, the kick. And it's Chris Clopton for Purdue. Clopton getting outside. And he's out across the 40 with a good return to the 44-yard line. Excellent field position for the Boilermakers. Now Purdue will try to answer. Watson straight ahead to the 45-yard line. Second and eight. Billy Dickens changing the play. Swings it out to Gabe Cox. Out to the 47-yard line. Very close to a first down. Right now, Cedric Irvin is on his way to the locker room. And that doesn't look good. the reverse ticket knocked down and almost picked off sorry to do second and ten Watson little inside handoff and a nice pickup for what looks like another Boilermaker first down on first and ten Watson again slips a tackle and is dragged down second and seven Some tough yardage. Well short of the first down. Gain of maybe two. That's an already with 55 yards. Dick in. Out for the catch and down he goes. My goodness. Sorry, Canoe. A 47 yard field goal attempt is up and no good. 14-7. Cedric Irvin is out. Mark Renaud carries the load out to the 35-yard line. Purdue's not out of the Big Ten championship picture yet. Renaud over the left side to the 36-yard line. In fact, Joe Tiller told us yesterday, he told his team this week, that last year around this time of year, there was a Northwestern team. Two years ago this time of year, there was a Northwestern team sitting around with one loss and found themselves to be Big Ten champions. Yeah, he said he had to remind his team not to be satisfied with what they've done so far this year. That the Rose Bowl is still a possibility and they ought to fight for that. Third down and four. are really starting to bring the pressure from different angles. The speed with which they come at the Michigan State bigger lineman is phenomenal. Paul Edinger's punt and 
Vinny Sutherland will watch it roll out of bounds. And watch it across the 40 to the 41 yard line. Now the Boilermakers can't really take their time here. There's two and a half minutes left in this first half. Incomplete. He was looking for Isaac Jones. Purdue would like to put another one on the reel before they go into the locker room. Rush coming. Dickon will tuck it under. And he's not going to get there. To the 43-yard line, well short of the first down. And look who's back. Cedric Irvin jogging back onto the field for the final moments of this first half. Movement up front. Flags go down. Prior to the snap, full start on the offense. Five yards. Remains fourth down. Brandon Kayser to punt. A low line drive. It gets a good roll and it's out of bounds. All right, now Todd Schultz and the Spartans. Mark Renaud straight ahead. Out to the 23 yard line. Final moments of this first half. Renaud. Close to the 30 yard line. Has a first down. There's Irvin, who has come back out of the locker room. On first and 10. It's Renan. Close to another first down. They will put it up, but not deep. Renan goes down at the 43 yard line. And his first half of his history. The kick. And Clopton has it at the 11. Clopton's got some speed. And another nice return by Chris Clopton out to the 43 yard line. And the Boilermakers, their own 43. Edwin Watson across the 45 out to the 46 yard line. Let's head to the sidelines for an update from Sean Salisbury. Guys, we have an injury update on Cedric Irvin, the tailback of Michigan State. Expect to see him in the second half. He has a nasty case of turf toe. They've went in, examined it, taped it up heavily. He's got a shoe on, and it's a thick shoe at that. He'll be in the game in the second half. They're going to try to let him go, guys. That's an actually a, a, a natural turf toe, unlike an astro turf toe. But he certainly is a big part of the Spartans' attack, although Mark Renat played very well in the first half. Watch it across midfield. Sutherland, the catch, got to get outside. He does inside the 40. Nice call on Gilmore. They'll mark it at the 38 yard line. Billy really Dickin looking at a four receiver set. And lots of time over the middle. Winston, he's blasted at the eight yard line. Second down and 10. Watson straight ahead inside the 35, down to the 32 yard line. It will bring up third down and a long four. Third and four. Here comes. Dickens throw. Winston made this catch. And he tumbles down at the 21 yard line with a first down for the Boilermakers. Yeah, nice catch by Winston. Gain of maybe three. I told you that Cedric Irvin has a natural turf toe. Nowhere to go for Watson. Uh, Demetrius Underwood made sure there was nowhere to go. Blitz coming, Dickin throw, Sutherland over throw, it's incomplete. And Billy Dickin knew right off the bat when Sutherland lined up that Sutherland was the man to go to. 36 yard attempt. Blocked! The Spartans have blocked it. Michigan State, their own 15. And it's Renaud. The 16-yard line. 
It's going to be Newkirk, number 62, as he comes into the middle. He'll get right through. No one really blocks him well at all. Robert Newkirk, 62, right in the middle of the screen. Had an easy opportunity to block the field goal, and he did it. And that six points now that the Boilermakers have let get by them on a missed field goal from 47 and a block there. Not in motion. Out across the 25-yard line. Travis Reese with the pickup. Michigan State with the football and the lead. 14-7. Gary Scott in motion. And it's Renaud across the 30. Out to the 33-yard line. To the sidelines, Sean Salisbury. Gentlemen, at the top, we talked about confidence and quarterbacks. Todd Schultz, a perfect 10 of 10 in the first half. They're calling a great game for him, and 160 yards rushing doesn't hurt. His confidence grows. Billy Dickin, on the other hand, guys, I still think he's trying to force things. The ball down the middle, a little too much air, hung his receiver out to dry. Then on the would-be touchdown pass that he threw out of the end zone, he hesitated on his three-step drop, and he ran out of room, guys. He's got to start reacting instead of trying to force things to happen. Up to you. Second down and three. Renaud is split out as a wide receiver. That's Scott in motion. And a loose ball. Schultz will fall on it. Flags go down. Prior to the snap, full start on the offense. Five yards, still second down. Second down, eight. Out across the 30. We haven't seen Cedric Irvin yet. Mr. Gilmore. Cedric Irvin picked up 73 yards and 16 carries before coming out of the ball game. Renaud is closing in on 100 as well. On third down and six. Schultz. Caught. Then dropped. Incomplete. The first incompletion all day. Low snap. And Sutherland down at the 32-yard line. Sutherland in motion. Winston on the screen. And he'll gain maybe four. Dickens swings it, Winston dropped it. Michigan State has made some big plays defensively today and on the special teams. It's been a team effort, and that's really the calling card of Nick Saban. Well, they've really got it. You see what they've taken away, the running game, only three and a half yards of carry. They've blocked a field goal. They have a sack and an interception, and what you don't see there are the two big hits in the middle of the field by the safeties. They've been intimidating as well. And that is really something that makes a big impact on an offense. Story Canoe and Marshall, Lamar Marshall with big hits. Third down and seven. Dickin overthrows his man. He was looking for Alfred, and it's incomplete, and Dickin is down. Well, keep in mind that this offense that Michigan State is playing against has put up a lot of numbers this season, Rich. A lot of yardage. Today, only 185 yards. Not much of the 324 against Iowa was in the first half. And you take the second half and the first half in this game, and the Purdue offense has produced just seven points. Dickin is okay. Got himself off the field. Gary Scott picks it up and it goes down inside the 20 yard line. Shows a quick throw. Octavius Long to the 24 yard line. That's a page right out of the Joe Tiller Purdue playbook. His only incompletion, a drop. Scott's in motion. On second and five, Renaud bouncing it outside. He's got the first down. Ten-yard pickup. 107 yards 
today. He was over 1,000 two years ago, and then Cedric Irvin stepped on campus and took that position over. Schultz is going to throw it away. A wise decision. It's incomplete. At second and ten. Hey, guess who's got the football? Irvin with the ball. The officials say he was down before he coughed it up. Welcome back, Cedric Irvin. Uh, Rich, I told you he'd find a way to get back on that field. The problem is when you have an injury, your mental focus on carrying the ball is lessened a little bit. Because you're thinking a little bit about that injury or you feel it a little bit more, you feel the pain a little bit, and your concentration lapses at the end of plays. And the ball comes out there, but it was moved down. Third down. Two, Irvin out. Renaud in. A quick throw and long with the catch, but a whistle stopped things before the snap. The play clock may have expired. Yeah, I think you're exactly right, partner. Schultz saw the blitz, and he was trying to, to audible at the line of scrimmage and lost track of the clock. Tiller needs a stop. Lots of time. Curl with a catch on a gorgeous throw by Schultz. First down, Michigan State. Yeah, and he had lots of time. That was the key, Rich. Josh Kerr. Schultz has him on the move again. Scrambling, he'll keep it. And just missed getting hit. Second down. And not diving forward. No gain on the play to bring up third down. And about seven. 107 yards for Renat. Schultz in trouble. The throw is picked up. Intercepted. Lee Brush. And Purdue gets their stop. Number 40, Willie Fells coming in, running the stunt. He gets right in Schultz's face, and that pressure caused the interception. Lee Brush coming up with it. And how the pass rush and the pass coverage work together. And now the Boilermakers will try to capitalize on the momentum shift going up top. Incomplete. Matt Campbell made a nice play. Second down and ten. It's really the first time they have sent all from deep and thrown to it. Little screen, Sutherland. And a bounce of the 31 yard line. And that's an automatic call. Yard line. He'll get it again. And this time he's down to the 31. It's a gain of about six. Second and four. Dipping threw that one away. Overthrows Chris Daniel. Very smart. He had nothing there. It was second down. You got another play, so don't force him. Quarterback 
draw. Dip in. Very close. I think he has it. He does. And ironically, it is the running by Dickin, which has sort of given him his confidence again. Final moments, third quarter. First and ten, Purdue. Watson. Still on his feet. And Watson, a senior. And it's special to play Michigan State. He's a Pontiac, Michigan kid. yard line. Tiller lost his offensive coordinator. Larry Corpich died when they arrived here in Purdue. He died in July. The staff has had to take over those duties. They have, and they've done it well. But they do miss him dearly. 13th play of this drive. They're going to flag Purdue with a hold. Yep. First and goal at the 14. Dickens throw over everyone. Rod, what does the condensed field do to a spread offense? Oh, well, it limits where you can throw the ball. I mean, it makes everything tighter. It means that the defensive backs have to cover less territory. There's less room for the receivers to run in. So therefore, everything's got to happen faster. There's not as much room. That's trouble. Second and goal. Sutherland in motion. Quick screen. Winston. And the little man is wiped out at the 11 yard line. Third down and goal. Well, Rich, that play doesn't work down in this area against man-to-man -man coverage. And that's because if somebody is signed to Sutherland, and it's simple, you see him run over there, you run to him. And that's what Michigan State did, and they were able to stop the play. Third down and goal. We're doing this converted three straight third downs, but this one is a little different. This is a third and goal from the 12. Dickon has time, and a man! Isaac Jones to the four-yard line, and it's decision time for Joe Tiller, and it looks like the Boilers will kick the field goal. Yeah, and that's the right decision. They haven't done anything in a long time, and there's plenty of time in this fourth quarter. They need to get a score to get their confidence going. But making a field goal is not an easy deal. Shane Ryan has missed twice. 21 yards, difficult angle. Got it. Went down on one side. 
some need to field it. That's where they'll mark it. We go down to the field, Sean Salisbury. Rich and Rod, you talked earlier about Michigan State's 1-9-1 one, one record on natural grass. Well, I found out before the game that Purdue has let this grass go a little higher to slow down the faster Michigan State football team. And an interesting note, this is a sand-based natural surface. And if you've ever played beach volleyball or ran on the sand, you realize after a while you start to fatigue. And that's what Purdue hopes will happen to Michigan State before it's over. Sean, they call this turf prescription athletic turf. This is where that turf, which is widely used in college football, was developed right here at Purdue. Michigan State would like to develop some offense right now. Mark Renard going nowhere. Schultz overthrows his man, and it's incomplete. And, ten. Yeah, and, and right now, Purdue is guessing right along with us, which is, well, they want to get Schultz going again. They're going to run a quick, short route, and none of the defensive backs backed up more than seven or eight yards that time. They just stopped dead in their tracks, expecting a short throw. Stretching the field has been a, a real problem for the Spartans. Offensive coordinator Gary Tranquil told us that yesterday. On third down, and ten, Schultz. Over the middle, Scott with a catch of the first down for Michigan State. And that was a heck of a play by Todd Schultz. Schultz again, going deep, man open, it's caught, it's long, Octavius Long, he'll score! Touchdown, Michigan State! Todd Schultz to Octavius Long! The Spartans have built an 11 point lead. Michigan State on top now by 11, answering the Purdue field goal with a touchdown. Chris Clopton has come close to breaking a couple, and he's out to the 27 yard line. That's where the Boilermakers will start this drive. Ten minutes left in this football game. They're down 11. And Ed Watson for a gain of about five. Isaac Jones with the catch. Dick in. Got to get rid of it. And he overthrows his man, Dave Cox. He's got a fair catch, and he makes it at the 34-yard line to run some clock. Mark Renard will do just that. Across the 40-yard line, it's a gain of about six. Renard again has to get close to the 45 for a first down. He's short. Scott in motion. Renard on the draw, and he's stopped at the 42-yard line. Purdue will get the football back. Mike Rose made the play. One snap, and it was almost blocked, and Edinger is hit. Flag is down. Michigan State will hold on to the football. The Boilermakers gamble. Todd Stelma. Travis Reese going nowhere. He'll lose five yards. Schultz and the Spartans faced with second and 14. 11 point lead. Back to about the 44 yard line. Third and 13. Schultz will throw a little screen pass to McFadden who goes down at the 44 yard line. Winston. Goes down at the 21-yard line. Drew Brees. His first throw complete gave Cox to the 25-yard line. There you see the numbers on Drew Brees. 14 of 30. No touchdowns, no picks. He comes in for Billy Dickin, who had a tough afternoon. Sean Salisbury told you about confidence. Well, this man didn't get his back today. Brees' throw is deflected and incomplete. Third down and four. And with under four minutes, this is probably four down territory. 
Need a turnover. Renaud straight ahead to the 15 yard line. Second down and eight. Clock continues to run. Oh man, Renaud was wiped out. And Fadden goes down. You know, a field goal in this situation, Rod, doesn't do them all that much good. He is perfect from this distance this year, and it's blocked, and it's loose, and it's picked up, and Purdue's got the football. Roosevelt Coleman. Roosevelt Coleman will score. My goodness. The Boilers are right back in it. Now, if you're Purdue, you're down five. You need to go for two to that's, put yourself within a field goal. That's exactly what they're doing. Now Dickin comes back into the ball game. Away with the freshman and back to the guy that you just pulled out of the game a series ago. Dickin for his tight end Blackman and it's incomplete. down five at Billy Dickin at the helm. Two minutes left. Two timeouts to go. Batted down. Dickens throw. After the catch, clock will stop with the first down at the 39 yard line. Dickens throw. Nice catch. Watson is out of bounds. It's a game of about four. Participation, 12 men on the defense, half the distance, still first down. Oh, man. How do you have that when you come out of a timeout? First and goal from the two. Take it alone in the backfield. He'll go down. He'll get it. Watson. Offside, on the defense, five yards, still first down, first and five. The penalty stops the clock until the snap. 
The nod straight ahead. Down he goes. Spartans will call a timeout with seven seconds left.